So there is this free and amazing uh, procedural cloud generator uh, by Simon Thorms that I thought you might be interested in. Uh, and uh, basically what it is, it's just a blend file with uh, custom node groups uh, that let you uh, generate procedural uh, clouds or what he calls them, procedural cloud uh, landscapes or scapes. It's uh, a group of uh, nodes uh, with uh, different parameters that are exposed into one single node group can be animated as you can see in the uh, in these thumbnails here. You also have this functionality where you can simply just draw uh, the clouds as you want them, like you see here. Uh, this is uh, not exactly an add-on, but uh, it's just a blend file uh, that uh, you can download from this page. Yeah, I'll be leaving a link in the description if you are interested in getting it yourself. Uh, it's free, you can use it for commercial use, and uh, as it says here, uh, use it however you like, even commercially. However, make sure to credit uh, Simon Thorms. That's the only requirement he has. If you download the project file, uh, which I think I showed you the link, but let me show you again. Uh, the link to this page is going to be in the description, but uh, you can get uh, the down. But what you want to download is this uh, blend file here. So you go to this link and then this uh, file here is the blend file. And this is what you get. And you have some procedural uh, node groups uh, that uh, let you generate uh, the clouds. And uh, you can see we have three types of uh, clouds uh, to be generated here and uh, if you look at uh, the outliner you see also three uh, different uh, types of clouds uh, if you open up the project file it might be you might be looking for this navigation here uh, which is usually up here he moved it down here if you're confused and you can't find it i just find it uh, down here or better you can just click on this plus Go to general and then layout uh, so that your default layout that you're used to is uh, the one that is loaded in and uh, you still have uh, the all the setups as you want and uh, you know you will know where you have where everything is uh, instead of just uh, going with that what he has here which is can be very confusing uh, given that he has changed uh, the position the location of different menus and uh, panels so just go to you know layout uh, so that you can load in uh, your default layout uh, your default layout setup and i'm just going to change uh, my image viewer here to the outliner so that uh, we can see all the uh, custom node groups so the all the collections that are uh, available to us now another thing i would recommend is that i uh, go to the filters and turn on this uh, this disable in viewport so that you can see what layers are enabled and what layers are disabled you can see right now uh, two of the location two of the collections are disabled uh, so if you go to camera view you're not seeing anything uh, because well the camera is pointed to nothing uh, so if you try to render you also won't see anything because uh, the, what the camera is looking at is already disabled here so if I go, let me change this to my 3D view here. If I turn on some of these layers, we should be able to see. So I think this camera is totally looking at nothing. So you might want to move it around so that it points, so that it sees something. And you can see now we are seeing some clouds. And I remember these are animated. So if I play back, you'll see that uh, we have some animation in the clouds, which I think is quite amazing. Uh, so let me go on and disable some of these clouds uh, so that we got, we focus on mainly uh, this one here. And uh, you can see I'm looking at it directly, but uh, I'm not seeing it here. Uh, the reason for that is that uh, if you go to your volumetrics settings here, you'll find that uh, your clip end or your end, uh, let me see what's this, your end distance of the volumetric effect is clipped at uh, 200 meters. And uh, so if I measure the distance from here to this, you can see that uh, it's way beyond uh, the clip distance uh, for the volumetric. So you would have to have, you need to extend this for you to start to see uh, the clouds uh, themselves. So I'm just going to extend this to about 500 so that we can see most of the clouds. Now to use this in your personal projects, all you have to do is select uh, what cloud you want to use. Uh, let me just give this a quick render so that you can at least see, appreciate uh, the amount of detail that is 
going into these clouds. He also added some nice vignetting effects and uh, some, uh, I think, chromatic aberration effects as well uh, that you can see in the details there. But uh, if you want to use this in your project files, all you have to do is uh, select any of the clouds you want and uh, just copy it. I'm just going to get this, grab this Ctrl C, and then paste it in any project you have. You can see we don't have any clouds here. Uh, this is a project I worked on previously and I think there is a time lapse of it on my second channel, Blender templates but uh, yeah so you just copy the other clouds you want and then paste them here now this is quite large uh, so but i can see that uh, we already seal other uh, clouds in there so i'm just going to move them up just a bit and you can see we already see some amazing clouds uh, another thing uh, that you might need to change is that uh, your default lock focal length is about 50 so it's going to be very hard for you to see uh, the clouds with that focal length especially if you are in the viewport so if you want to see the clouds more easily just change this to something like 25 so that you can see so that you have a wider angle uh, for your cloud for your view and uh, uh, these clouds will look far better if you have a sun a sun lamp in your scene so if you see they just look they just look dark right now but uh, if I add a sun lamp just give it some direction and uh, increase its power to something like 10 or oh, let's try 30 you can see we get some amazing clouds the clouds are affected by uh, the color uh, of your sun so you can see you can get that uh, uh, dawn effect there or sunrise sunset effect uh, in the clouds uh, these clouds are animated so you can see them move around yeah I think uh, those are some amazing uh, clouds and uh, if you want to make the quality even better all you have to do is uh, play around with your volumetric uh, settings uh, for example you can increase other uh, number of samples here change yourselves the uh, the tile size and uh, do quite a lot here to get uh, better results with uh, this so you can uh, also paint other uh, cloud here so let's just do that quickly before we close out this story so uh, if we go to the custom let me first turn off this off I think uh, this would be the custom change this to the 3d view let's go to this yeah this here uh this is where you, you this is uh the cloud that uh you can you you, you are able to draw uh, the pattern so if you go to the painter uh, to the image editor and then change this out uh, of the paint i think you need the cloud distribution and start painting you can see we're adding new uh, strokes uh, i think if we change this uh, to paint mode uh, texture paint we should be able to draw and uh, you can even erase if you want to get rid of any information that uh, you have painted in to start afresh so i can paint a smiley face here you can see and uh, I think uh, the thickness is uh, just a result of let's see uh, the height and uh, if you apply the scale of this it should be in the same size of uh, quite amazing functionality here you can paint directly uh, you can paint the clouds directly and uh, I think you also have the functionality to just go back in and uh, change uh, the, the small details that you see here change the size of the clouds that they don't have a lot of noise or yeah so thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video